to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ the father of mercies and the god of all comfort one of the wonderful things about being a child of god is that we have the god of comfort on our side we all need comfort we all need encouragement and we hope you'll stay tuned for today's lesson as we think about how christians are comforted from above welcome to the gospel of christ program my name is ben bailey and we're so glad that you've joined us for our broadcast today Today's lessons are being brought to you by members of the Church of Christ worldwide. Those members of the Church of Christ in your area would love for you to stop by and visit their worship assembly. If you've got a Bible question or there's something you'd like to study, they'd be happy to sit down and study the Word of God together with you. Also, at the Gospel of Christ, we'd love to help you in your study of the Word of God. You can log on to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, and all our Bible study material is free of charge and available to you. If you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson, whether on DVD or CD, we'd love to send that to you. You can fill out a media request form from our website, or you can call us toll-free at one 855 458-3905. On our website, we have a host of Bible study material, including transcripts, study question, question and answers, and a variety of study materials that would help you in your study of the Word of God. Friend, at the Gospel of Christ, we're concerned about the salvation of souls. That's our main emphasis. We're not concerned about your wallet. We're not concerned about hidden agendas. We just simply want to help men and women know the Word of God and to go to heaven. And so as we transition to our study today, we hope that you'll get your Bible out and have it handy as we're going to look to the Word of God together. The Bible records in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 4, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort which we ourselves receive from God. One of the wonderful aspects of being a child of God is we have comfort, comfort and help from God above. You know, sometimes this world and the things that occur make us very uncomfortable. Sometimes sin comes into our lives or to somebody we love in their life, and it's an uncomfortable situation. Sometimes death of a friend, of a loved one, of a member of the Lord's body brings discomfort to us. Sickness, immorality in the world in which we live in, worldliness, all of those things can cause Christians a great deal of discomfort. How then can we find comfort from God in a world that is so sin-stricken and often we feel uncomfortable living in? Today we hope to identify the comfort Christians have from above that gives us hope and encouragement and that picks us up when we get down as a child of God. Number one, as we think about how to have comfort today, we take comfort in the fact that there is a God of comfort. Paul said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Friend, the fact that God exists and that God is the source of comfort is great hope, gives great hope and encouragement to every child of God. Friend, think about this. We're not in it alone. The fool says there is no God, Psalm 14, 1, but to the child of God, we walk through this life hand in hand with God. God says, cast all your cares on me. I care for you, 1 Peter 5, verse 7. And so the very fact that we have a living God is in and of itself a great deal of encouragement. You know, I don't have to look far to know there is a God. 
you can look to the beauty of the heavens and know we serve a living God. The heavens declare the glory of God and the earth the firm in His handiwork. Psalm 19, verse 1 following. You can see by the things He's made the invisible attributes of God. Romans 1, verses 18 through 21. The, 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 even the seasons and the change of, of the seasons, they declare to unto, unto us the power of God. Acts 14, verse 17. And so when I look at the world around me, I'm encouraged by knowing there is a God. I'm encouraged as I look to the Bible to know there is a God also. The Word of God itself tells us He exists. Genesis 1 verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And so when I read my Bible and I recognize this is the inspired Word of God, it tells me of God's existence that man isn't in it in and of himself. You know, Christians often sing the beautiful hymn, There is a God, He is alive. And how encouraging it is to know we serve the living God. But, but what about God's existence gives us comfort? It isn't just enough to know, hey, there's a God that exists. I want to know who that God is. And as I learn about Him, I am indeed comforted. Let me illustrate. One of the things about God that, that really comforts us as Christians is His unchanging nature. I can know God and I can know His nature. Philippians 3 verse 10, Paul said, I want to know Him and the power of His resurrection. God is a God who has revealed Himself to us and you can know and I can know about God. What do I know about Him? I know that God does not change. Malachi 3 verse 6, God said, I am God, I change not. Hebrews 6 and verse 18, the Scripture says, Of two immutable things which God, who cannot lie, has told us about Himself. And so what do we know about God? He cannot lie. It is impossible for God to lie. Titus 1 verse 2, the Bible says this. You think about comforting things about God and about Christ. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. How does that comfort me? Friend, listen carefully. The unchanging nat nature of God means that He can be a constant in my life and yours. He doesn't lie. He doesn't change. Uh, he's always the same. He's that rock you can lean on. He's that source of strength that you can always depend on as a child of God. And, and that gives us great comfort to know, hey, God's always going to be there for me. He's never going to turn His back on us. We can always put real trust in Him. What else about God's nature gives us great comfort? The God we serve, the one whom we can know, is a God of love. God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. Whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible says, while we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone might dare die. But God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, verses 6 through 8. And kind of as a summary statement, 1 John 4, verse 8 says, God is love. When that word love is conjured up in your mind and you think of the tenderness, you think of the care, you think of the compassion, you think of the, the, the providing and putting others first. Friend, that's who God is. Not only does God not change, God, the God of all comfort, is the very source of love. I will assure you, nobody has ever loved you like God loves you. I know that because He gave His best so that we could be saved. What else comforts us about God's nature? Not only is God unchanging, not only is God a, a God of love, God is just. Genesis 18 verse 25, the question is asked, Will not the judge of all the earth do rightly? And friend, you can take it to the bank. You can be sure God will always do the right thing. Nahum 1, God will not at all acquit the wicked. John 12, verse 48, Jesus said, we're going to be judged by the Word of God. You know, initially you may think, well, how does that give us comfort? Friend, if God's going to do right, 
If God's not going to equip people who uh, live in an ungodly manner, if we have a sure standard, then here's the good news. If the justice of God is going to prevail and I live my life based off of this book, friend, it comforts me beyond measure to know that if I'm faithful to the Lord, one day I can hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of your Lord. Now, as you think about things about God that comfort us, I want us to also notice that our God, He promises, the God of all comfort promises to protect and care for His children. Listen to Psalm 23 and verse 4. The Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they do comfort me. God goes with us through the valleys, through the highs and through the lows. God's there and He's going to take care of us. I love the words of Hebrews 13 verse 5. The Lord has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, so that you may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? What, what kind of promises do I have that, that offer great comfort to me? God said to me and He said to you through His Word, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You can boldly say, the Lord's my helper. In our times of difficulty, in times of sadness, in times of, of great sorrow, let's realize we can trust an Almighty God. You know, when I think about God and some of the things in Scripture that offer us great comfort, one of those is found in Psalm 18 and verse 2, and that is that the Bible promises God is going to be the protector of His children. Listen to these words as the psalmist thinks about things no doubt that brought great discomfort to his life and how even at times his life was on the line. He says in Psalm chapter 18 verse 2, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Who's going to protect you, God? Who's going to take care of you? The Almighty. And you know, friend, I need that protection. I need that help in times of great difficulty. There are things I need protection from. I need protection from Satan. Satan is going to do everything possible to cause us to be lost. The Bible says he is a very wily and conniving individual. 1 Timothy 3, verse 7. We've got to be wary of the wiles of the devil, Ephesians 6, verse 11. In fact, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, Simon, Satan desires to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But listen to this. But I've prayed for you that your faith would not fail. And you know, when I think about the help I get, Jesus said in Matthew 6, verses 6 through 9, we're to pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Does it bring us comfort to know that God is able to protect, deliver, and take care of us from Satan himself? Oh, you bet it does. God's able to protect and deliver us from sin. Sin is the great enemy of mankind. It is that which probably more than anything else brings discomfort to our life. And yet God can remedy that. Isaiah 59 verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, Lord's ear is not heavy, heavy that he cannot hear. His arms not shorten that he cannot save. But your sins and your iniquities have separated you from your God. That major discomfort that we feel spiritually is sin. When I have sin in my life and when you have sin in your life, friend, there's a whole lot of discomfort spiritually that goes with that. And yet God can take that away. Hebrews 10 verse 12 says, This man, Jesus, after he'd offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God. You will call his name Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. Matthew 1, 19 through 21. John saw Jesus approaching in John 1, 29, and he said, Behold, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And the scripture records so beautifully in Psalm 103 verses 10 through 12. God said, I'll be merciful to their sins. Their lawless deeds I remember no more. And in Psalm 103 verse 10, God said that He will not deal with man according to his sins. God has blessed man by offering 
forgiveness. And then, as I think about sometimes the, the discomfort we have in this world, let's also realize God's promise to take care of me and the needs that I've got physically. You know, when we think about struggles that we face, some of those are related to basically making our way through this life and the things that we need. But here's the good news for the child of God. Isn't it the case that God has promised to provide for His own in the Scripture? David said in Psalm 37, verse 25, I was young and now I'm old. He kind of takes a snapshot of life. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Is God going to provide for His children? You bet He is. Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things, what food, shelter, and clothing, will be provided for you. And then I love the words of Philippians 4, verse 19. My God shall supply all your needs in Christ Jesus. This is why we can rejoice when we say every good and perfect gift comes from above from the Father of lights with whom there is no shadow or variation of turning. How thankful we are and how much comfort it brings us to know God's going to take care of His children. But you know, friend, as we think about comfort we receive from above, one of the greatest sources of comfort is the Bible. This book, this inspired word from the mouth of God brings so much comfort and hope to every child of God in their life. Let me offer you just a few passages, I think, which will bring encouragement and which will bring hope and comfort to the child of God. For example, notice Psalm 119, verse number 50. This is my comfort in my affliction. Now watch this. For your word has given me life. Where can I find comfort at? God's word brings comfort and it enriches our life. The writer of the book of Romans, Paul, said in Romans 15, verse 4, the things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. Listen now, that we, through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might find hope. Your Word has given me comfort. I can find comfort in the Scriptures. Now, you just think about some of the passages in the Bible, and maybe you might mention others, but here are some that I think really ought to encourage every child of God. Philippians 4 verse 13 would be at the top of that list. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Bible does not say, I can do all things, period. That's not what it reads. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I gain strength through Christ, through His life, through His example, through the power of His Word to live as God wants me to. I gain strength by knowing. God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13 verses 5 through 7. Jesus said, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. I'm not in this alone. You're not in the fight alone. The fight, the good fight of faith, we don't have to do that by ourselves. God and Christ are there to help us. A second group of passages that I believe offers a great deal of hope to every child of God relates to and the comfort it brings to us as it relates to the beauty of heaven. Jesus spoke to His disciples who, were, who had on their mind the fact that He was going to have to leave them. Jesus had told them on multiple occasions, I'm about to have to leave, I'm about to have to die, I'm about to go back to the Father. And He knew their heart was uh, dismayed about that, knew they were in discomfort because of that. And so Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Were it not so, I would have told you. And then he said this, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. What brings comfort to every child of God, especially as it relates to death or sickness or loss? The fact that that's not the end. The fact that that's not the final curtain falling that we have a home promised with God in that beautiful place called heaven. That place where Scripture says, God will wipe away every tear from their eye. No more sorrow, no more death, no more crying, no more pain. All the former discomforts of this life cease to exist in that place. This is why Paul would say, 
in 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 18 that in, in view of the fact that Christ is going to come and receive us to Himself, therefore comfort one another with these words. You know, when I think about comfort and the comfort that the child of God can receive, there's a set of passages that deal specifically with the comfort we receive with the death of a Christian. Two in particular that I want to direct your attention to today. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 13, the Scripture says, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. What about when you lose a, a parent? What about when you lose a fellow brother or sister in Christ? What about when you lose someone close to you? Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. They may rest from their labors. Their works do follow them. Even in death, there's a comfort that that's a blessing for the child of God. The second passage that goes directly with that is Psalm 116, verse 15. If you haven't got this written down or circled in your Bible, you sure ought to. The Bible says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. I receive comfort and encouragement by knowing that when we stand at the graveside, when we stand at the coffin of a funeral, how does heaven look at one of God's children coming home? Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of His saints. It's not a bad thing. From heaven's perspective, what a wonderful day that is. And then, just from the day-to-day -day trials and difficulties that we have, a passage that often brings comfort is found in Psalm 23. You remember the words, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures and leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. Yea, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Friend, when you think about that whole host of verses in Psalm 23, the one overpowering emphasis is God's the Good Shepherd. He's going to take care of His own, whether it be food, whether it be water, whether it be suffering, whether it be the, the things we need in this life. God's going to take care of us. And thus the psalmist would say, I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Since God is the God of all comfort, who can take care of us? Let's make sure we stay faithful unto God. Then I'm reminded of this passage that brings so much comfort to every child of God, and, and especially because from time to time in our life we have, and we may make mistakes, we may sin in the future. Here's one of the comforts we have. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of His Son Jesus Christ cleanses us of all sin. 1 John 1 verse 7. If after becoming a child of God I, I sin and I fall short or I do something that I shouldn't do, is it all over then? No. I can make a determination to repent of that, to confess it, to turn from it. 1 John 1 verses 8 through 10. And the blood of Christ still can cleanse us of all sin. Hebrews 8 13. God says, I'll be merciful to their sins, their lawless deeds I'll remember no more. You know, when I think about the help we have, when I think about how good it is to be a Christian and, and how wonderful I have it in Christ, I'm reminded of 1 John 4, verse number 4. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Yes, we're fighting Satan. Yes, we're fighting sin. Yes, there are struggles. Yes, there are difficulties that, that each of us have to deal with. But let's realize the one who's in us, God and Christ who are in us, are greater than the one who's in the world. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we want to draw one more idea out that will really help us to have comfort in this life. And friend, it's a very simple and basic principle. If I'm going to find comfort in this life, I've got to realize contentment brings comfort. Listen to Philippians chapter 4, verse 11. Paul said, Not that I speak in regard to need, for I've learned in whatever state I am to be content. You really want to find comfort in this life? You really want to have the peace and tranquility and, and satisfaction that the Scripture promises? You've got to learn to be content. Paul said, I've been abased and I've been abound. I've learned to be content in whatever state I'm in. Can't let this world pull us in so much that we're never happy and comfortable. Be comfortable where you are. If God gives you more, that's good. If God takes away, I can learn to deal with that as well. I just need to learn to be content 
in this life. For my friend, the most important things we have are not the things of this world. They're the spiritual things that we have. A rich young ruler came to Jesus, and here was a man who you can tell is in a really difficult struggle. He's in a state of discomfort. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, keep the commandments. Do not murder, do not steal, do not commit adultery. Honor your father and mother. All these things I've done since my childhood. One thing you lack. Sell what you have, give to the poor, come follow me. The Bible says that man went away sorrowful. Why? He had great possessions. Don't let the cares of this world bring discomfort to you spiritually because you're not putting Jesus first. You know, when I think about the real purpose and the real aim of life, I'm reminded of what Solomon said. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse number 13 and 14, Solomon said, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What's life all about? Fear God. Keep His commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Why? God will bring into judgment, bring into judgment every work, including every secret thing, whether good or bad. My life and serving God. Those are the things that are really important. Looking toward heaven and making sure that we really strive to do the things God wants us to. And friend, let's each realize as part of the comfort we have is the hope of heaven. Do we really stay focused on heaven that one day I can leave this life and go to a place that is far better than we can ever begin to imagine? You know, we, we often sing songs, how beautiful heaven must be or heaven holds all to me, or that paradise valley. You know, if I'm going to be comforted, I've really got to keep that on my mind, that this world is temporary. The things that I face are temporary. The difficulties we deal with, those are only temporary. Heaven is what it's all about. Remember Paul saying again, Romans 8 verse 18, I consider the sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Paul, in essence, said, heaven will be worth it all. And so do we have the God of all comfort on our side? Absolutely. Let's be encouraged. Let's be comforted. And let's do everything we can to make sure we get to that beautiful place of comfort, heaven itself. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.